Hey guys, it's Drew the Coos Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be showing you guys how we made $3,000 on a silver dollar, essentially. And the way the video is going to be laid out today is a little bit different from most of our recent videos. And all we're going to really be doing is showing you guys coins that we submitted to CAC for stickering. Just basically a service where they give an opinion about what they think about a coin. Do they think it's great for the grade? Do they think it exceeds the grade? Or do they think that there's something that uh, the graders missed essentially before and that's the reason why they didn't give it this sticker and so What we did was we submitted a lot of coins to CAC We just got them back and what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys What's great about each coin or not so great about each coin and tell you guys why we believe those coins were good or not good And if you guys are interested in the giveaway that we had last video we're going to be announcing the winner at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So for somebody interested in this current giveaway, we're going to be giving away a 2016 American Silver Eagle. It's going to be graded NGC MS69. It's great for somebody that wants to stack or somebody that wants to add coins to their collection. And, you know, we just want to give back to people that support us so much in the comments and people that support our videos. So make sure to comment, and if you enjoy the video, like the video, or subscribe. All right, guys, so the first coin I want to show you is this 1853 Arrows and Rays seated half dollar. It's great XF45. I sent it in for the beam because I thought the coin was mostly original and nice looking, and this coin actually didn't come back with the bean. And I'm also going to give you a reason why I think it didn't. I just felt like it was too strong at a 45. When you're looking at 45s, you want them to have a little bit more luster. And the details seemed a bit weak for a 45. Maybe this coin is a 40 in all actuality. And that's the reason why it didn't sticker. And that's okay. We sent in a few buffalo nickels. One of them, actually two of them, came back with a green bean. So when you're looking at buffalo nickels, which is good, you also need to be looking at kind of where the cheek is here. And you also have to be looking at, on the reverse, right where you can see the shoulder of the buffalo. And so when you're looking at the shoulder of the buffalo, if it's fully struck, the luster's phenomenal, and your buffalo is graded a 64 or a 65, most of the time they undergraded buffaloes and rattlers, and so you end up getting away with a gold sticker, which just basically means they uh, felt the coin was superb, and it probably is undergraded as well. We did send in a few other buffalo nickels, including this 38D buffalo nickel. Very nice color to the coin. We did spend $30 basically with shipping everything, getting this coin stickered. Spent $35 paying for this coin. So we're probably just getting our money back out of this, this piece, but it's good to check and see if a coin would come back with a gold sticker. And this coin really is a nice gem, just isn't the gold bean. And the gold bean is the premium most times on those buffalo nickels. We also bought this early cap bust half from the same guy. It's um, it's from 1817, so early cap bust, VF25. When I looked at the surfaces, it just felt like they were mostly original, gorgeous looking, nice color. And when I was comparing it to other VF25s, I felt this one was a strong contender for the bean. And it ended up did coming back with the bean as well, so that's pretty cool. We sent in this 1894S Morgan Dollar. It's great in state 60. It does have a lot going on, especially in the fields. And there are some pretty big hits coming down the cheek behind the eye. There's two kind of stray marks, but one in particular is this one. And so when you're looking at that coin, they might think it's a scratch at CAC. And PCGS said it's okay at Min state 60. I don't see it as a scratch. So two different opinions, splitting hairs, but that's okay. Still a nice coin. Still a better date for the series. Now, as you guys remember, this 1849 Charlotte that we ended up buying at uh, the Tyler Coin Show over the table. We wanted to send this one in. The Charlotte Mint is notorious for poor dyes. They didn't change them out too often. They wanted them to go as far as they can. And most of the time, it just ended up making soft strikes or ugly coins that look really, really cleany. And so this coin didn't come back with a bean. It's got a scratch right here behind the head, as you can see. And Overall, though, I felt like the coin was nice. It had some decent charm in terms of color. And I don't know. What do you guys think of that coin down below? I'd love for you to let me know. So this is an 1882 proof three cent nickel. So I was looking at the cheek, trying to ch check out the fields as well. 
and I was trying to see would this coin be a good candidate for a gold bean. It's an old NGC holder and it came back with a green bean. Not too sure why, but that really just depends on my knowledge of proof three cent nickels. And this one, unfortunately, didn't come back with that. But when you're buying a coin like this and it's got the green bean, it's got everything that you might want. And it's a, you know, a limited proof coin. Getting the bean on it's not too bad either. So we have this 1889 CC Morgan dollar, key date of the Carson Cities for sure. This one's great at VF25. We also bought a VF35 with this coin as well from a different, uh, from the same dealer. And this one I felt like had really nice, rich, original surfaces, but they didn't think it was bean worthy. Maybe because it was just too strong at VF25, maybe a VF20 would be good. And there also looks like to be eraser burns or something behind the head there, giving it that really black and unattractive look to it. They want nice coins that they sticker, so I understand if they don't like this coin too much. Then we have a very limited business strike, two and a half. So this is from 1876. I'll leave the mintage right below this coin so you guys can see how scarce it is, especially for business strikes. You know, proofs have a limited mintage and a lot of them are kept safe, so the, there's an abundance of, of them out there. Business strikes most times were melted down, or they just weren't used for coin collectors. They're used for commerce instead. So this coin is AU58. Maybe they felt AU58 was too strong of a grade. There are a lot of things going on in the fields here, as you can see, and that's okay. Then we have this 1893. P that we bought from the same shop. As you can see, the coin's original. You can see the luster blooming off of it. You can see the detail, the, the luster that's, you know, it's not only on the fields, but you can also see it on the, the face as well. And it's a better date. I wanted to see if it would sticker. Not a big premium for the sticker, but at least you can know that you're in check and just a phenomenal better date. We do have a few of those in stock, but that one definitely is the most original. Then we have this 1883O Morgan dollar in a mint state 62 NGC. As you can see, why would we ever submit this to CAC? So we submitted this to CAC because it is um, a white label. White labels were one of the first holders that they used past the black label. And you can tell it's a white label just by the, the paper that it was held in. And so this coin probably on a retail side is like 1500 bucks, maybe a little bit less. And people are just paying for the plastic and the paper on this coin. Then we have this 1870 proof three cent nickel, graded proof 64. You can see that really nice color on the obverse if I put the light on it. And on the reverse, it's got that same type of color coming through. But maybe they just didn't enjoy the color. Maybe they thought it was induced by something and the luster on the obverse is a bit flat, kind of hard to pick up on with this camera and this phone, but you know, splitting hairs on that one for me, don't really understand it, don't really know. Then we have this 1916D Mercury Dime, graded XF45. So they didn't sticker this coin either. Maybe it just doesn't have enough detail to it, or maybe it was lightly cleaned a long time ago, not too sure. And uh, you know, still a fantastic, 1916D, this is the best one that we've handled so far. And, uh, you know, not CAC worthy, but still a fantastic coin. We have this 1856 large cent. It's great, AU58 brown. I wanted to send it because I felt like the holder was nice and it'd be cool for a collector to have this coin. So this one didn't come back with the bean. It's got a kind of weird, different yellowish color on the obverse, as you can see. I think this coin was lightly cleaned or there's actually a big huge hit right here underneath the eye. Maybe they considered that damage, who knows? But still an affordable large scent that's really, really nice looking for somebody that's getting into large scents. It is more of a common date. Then we have this 1925 piece dollar. It's graded uh, Mint State 65 plus and it is now CAC approved. And the reason why we sent this one in is because we felt like it was undergraded. I think it's at least a six, maybe higher. And so this coin's not gonna be posted, but it's probably gonna be upgraded one day because you know PCGS and NGC don't always get it right, and that's okay. We have a few type coins to show you guys. First one is this 1815 
I'm sorry, the 1818 cat bus half and VF35. So you can see super original surfaces. And when it came back at VF35, I felt that was accurate for the coin. And then we got it from uh, PCGS, sent it to CAC. And when you take a look at the coin itself, I mean, just purely original. We know where the collection came from. We know that somebody that, that actually pulled it out of circulation, their, uh, their grandson held onto this coin. And so nothing was ever messed with with the coin. So it did have a great origin to it as well. Then we have this 1818 cat bus quarter and VG10. I mean, just look how beautiful and original these are. It did come back with a green bean because of how nice it is and how pure the coin is. A lot of these early date coins are cleaned, rubbed up because they want uh, to sell them for a higher premium. Somebody that might have messed with this coin wanted to sell it as a, a fine 15 or maybe they could scratch a VF out of it if someone was to buy it raw. The next coin is this 1942 Proof Mercury Dime and Proof 67 CAC. So you can tell just by how nice the coin is. There's no hairlines, there's no issues with the surfaces. I mean, just overall a fantastic piece. We bought this from the Tyler Coin Show as the last coin that we purchased from a customer over the table. And when I got this coin in hand, I'm like, you know what, why not send it? We did have a bunch of Mercury Dimes in our proofs that we kind of have understood the grading a little bit about them. And that's why we felt like that one had a good chance. So we have this 1904 $20 gold piece in Mint State 65 plus. This one did not sticker. Maybe it was just overgraded at a 65. Maybe they thought it was a 64. So with NGC, they think, you know, they actually grade $20 gold libs higher than most other grading companies like PCGS and CAC. And so that's why CAC maybe didn't see eye to eye. It's just overgraded probably, but still really nice. Great color, great luster, not over dipped, not messed with at all. Then we have this 1853 Arrows and Rays, graded AU55. You can see that color that is on the rim here. Maybe that was from an old cleaning or a retone after the cleaning, who knows? And you can also see that color on the reverse as well. And so they didn't sticker this coin either, but I felt like it was a nice coin to see because you know the wear on the coin is very light as you can see from the legs here and the breasts. The luster is great and remaining as well. Maybe they just think this coin is nice at a 53 or a 50. But once again, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on that piece. Then we have this 1937D Buffalo Nickel in 65 gold CAC. So, I mean, look how nice the cheek is here as we were talking about earlier. And also take a look at the shoulder as well. Fully struck, great original surfaces, fantastic luster. And they agree with me on gold CAC on that one because I actually put in the Excel sheet that that one with gold sticker and it did, which is awesome. Then we have this 38D Buffalo Nickel in 65. It felt like all of them with gold sticker, but only two did. It's unfortunate. Great purples and blues with toning on this obverse. And similar story on the reverse, maybe just a few nicks that held this coin from a gold CAC, but still fantastic. Then we have this 1875S 20 cent piece. Look how nice and original the surfaces are. It's great AU58, which I felt was a little strong by PCGS, but CAC agreed with us and agreed with PCGS and ended up stickering the coin. Most of the time you're trying to look for more of a original whitish looking coin for a 58. And this one was dark but original and they really like the coin so that's great too. Then we have this 1875 Carson City 20 cent piece. Original surfaces, graded fine 15. Bought this in Ohio and it came back with a bean. We just looked at the coin said wow perfect original crusty looking surfaces and I'm glad you know CAC agree with us. Then we have an 1854 $3 gold piece in AU55. It did come back with the sticker. And I mean, just look how nice the surfaces are. Just nice subtle wear, as you can see, going across the cheek there and in the fields. And on the reverse, it has that kind of similar story. 
but never messed with also. And it did come back with the sticker. Then we have our two big winners, which is this 1795 large scent. We bought this at the Chicago ANA from a dealer that was setting up, and we felt like we should give it a shot. The rim seemed a little bit too worn for us, but you know, hey, got the sticker. And 1795 large scents are notorious for being never stickered, and there's a big premium for a sticker on a 1795 large scent. Most of them, like we said, have issues, were messed with, were overgraded, and this coin, people love, so. And the last one, the big kahuna, is this $17.99 dollar. It's great, XF45, you can see that luster kind of coming through in the fields. My main hang up on this coin was the luster itself, and they ended up saying this coin's beautiful, crusty, original, and that's exactly how we saw it. Bought it from the a a from a dealer, sold one of them because we knew it wouldn't sticker, and sent this one in instead. And when we take a look at the last one that sold, it actually sold for around $7,200. And so we actually, after fees and everything, we actually made about $3,000 on this piece itself if we sold it for full retail. And the reason why this sticker is so important on this coin is because most of them, just like the 1795 large scent, were overgraded, or there's a lot of issues that happened, like cleaning, polishing, and NGC or PCGS would let that go, but CAC is very tough on these dollars and these series that are early. And so this one was a fantastic win for us. We hope we gave you guys some insight and our opinions on these coins. All right, guys, so we're gonna be scrolling down. We just put the video link in here for the giveaway. We're going to get YouTube comments here, and we had 311 comments from this video. So we're going to scroll down, and we are going to start the giveaway. Alrighty, Smooth Man Will, if you want to reach out to me either via Instagram, or if you want to reach out to me via my phone number, you can, or if you want to reach out to me via email, you can. So. Uh, Smooth Man Will, reach out to me at uh, goosecollectibles at gmail.com or our Instagram. I'm going to leave all the information right here. You have a week to claim your prize, which is the two silver Ikes that we talked about in the previous video. But if you guys did enjoy this video today, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the coins and everything else because we are uh, giving away as much as possible just to people that enjoy our videos and want to support us. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one.